Okay, here we are in Illustrator. And now we're going to open the DWG file that we've downloaded from Digimap, which will have uh, Ordnance Survey map data at quite high scale. And we're going to use this as a basis for a you know, site plan, for example, at a particular scale and on a particular size of paper. So we negotiate our way and find out where we left our file. Remember that the DWG file uh, has to be in a 2010 format or earlier. Anything later than that won't open in the current version of Illustrator. So we've already put this one through AutoCAD and made it into an older version. The, the newer versions are the default from, from Digimap. So you do have to convert it to this older version to use it in Illustrator. Okay, I'm not going to make any alterations to the incoming file. I'm just going to say it's original size and just hit OK. And I'm also going to ignore this warning message about fonts. And here we are. So you can see uh, this is the, the geometry that we've imported or opened. Uh, we can zoom in, we can see that it's all nice and sharp. Uh, lines have got a fair bit of thickness to them. We can sort that out later on. And you can see that it's been put across a sheet of paper of some size, so we're not familiar with, not doing it yet. And we'll need to sort these things out. Okay, the first thing probably to do now is to save it as an Illustrator file. Um, and just the latest version of Illustrator format-wise. Okay, so that's, that's good. Now we can just keep saving Command-S, Command-S all the time as we go through this. Okay, so let's see um, what we've got here. The first thing to do is we could look at the size it is, okay? Um, and scale, we could do that by measuring something in the geometry that we know the real size of. Now, for example, I happen to know that the front of the Granary Square building, CSM building, this red line here, just peeking into this, is about 104 meters across. Okay, so what we can do is we can get the measuring tool in Illustrator and measure that piece of geometry, see how big it is. Now, I've opened up the advanced toolbar here. If you don't see this by default, you need to access it with these three little uh, dots at the bottom up here and then click advanced. This gives us access to some additional tools, uh, one of which is the measuring tool and it's hidden under the eyedropper tool. So you do need to have the advanced toolbar available to get act the measuring tool. Okay, so once you've selected the measuring tool, you click on one end of the geometry you want to measure and you hold down your mouse button or the trackpad until you get to the end of your geometry and then you let go. And you'll notice that what, as soon as you start to measure things, a little info panel pops up. It gives you coordinates on the screen and width and height of any rectangles you might be measuring. But this key one we're interested in here is the one that says D for distance. The distance I've measured in my geometry is 104.77 millimeters. Okay, so it's a thousand. Uh, if I multiply 104 by a thousand, I will get the true size of the Granary Square building. What this tells me, of course, is that what we're looking at is geometry that is one to one thousand scale. Okay, so if we want to work at it one to one hundred or one to two hundred, we're going to have to make it bigger. Okay, but at least we know what it is and it's a nice round number. That's great. So we'll get rid of that panel. And now let's look at what kind of size of paper we're dealing with here. Illustrator is a graphics application, not really designed for technical drawing particularly or for working in CAD. It's not a CAD application. And it's, uh, its methodology is to think about paper and screen sizes and things like that, two-dimensional objects that you're creating graphics for usually. And what we've got here is what's called an artboard, this white area behind that. So what we're going to do is look at the size of the current artboard and make it the size we want. We can do that by going onto the window where the palettes are stored, and then we can select artboards. And we can see here it is, artboard one. You just click, double click on it. We can alter this and we can change it to a size. So the first thing we'll do is change it to landscape. Uh, can we pick an A size that's big enough? Not really. We'll just create our own. So let's make it A2, shall we? It's just five, nine, four by four, two, zero. Okay, and let's call it that, just to remind ourselves what we've done. A2 landscape, okay. 
There we go. Get rid of the arguments. Okay, so this is what this looks like now on an A2 sheet of paper. So there's a 1 to 1,000 drawing on an A2 sheet of paper. If you wanted that, then this is a good point to save it and keep it and use it again. Or if you perhaps had a wider cropping in Digimap and larger area of the site around the area, the site that you wanted to uh, use for a location map or a, for your site, then the, this 1 to 1,000 might be a useful scale for that. But what we're looking about to, to create here is um, something that might be useful as a site plan, the basis of a site plan, where we're going to show design drawings at 1 to 100 or 1 to 200 scale. So we're going to have to make this geometry bigger. Okay, now the, what we can do is scale it very easily. We have to select it all. So, so Command A will select everything. It's selected. We just want to make sure that we've selected everything in every layer. We can go over here and just have a look at the layers palette and see that everything is selected. We can tell that uh, from the side, all the buttons are selected. So if you command A, you can see all the little squares on the layers palette show that geometry is selected. So nothing is hidden, everything is selected, that's great. And now we can scale this bigger. We do that under object transform up here and then scale. Okay, object transform scale, you've got little three little dots, which means there are, it's going to open a menu and you can enter a value for the scale, which is what we want. We don't want to be dragging this because we will get imprecise values. We want to be sure of the translations that we're making here. Okay, so at the moment, obviously, it's 100%. It's normal size. So if we make it at 200%, we'll get a 1 to 500 plan. Okay, so let's do that first. Okay, so now what we're looking at is a 1 to 500 version of this geometry on an A2 sheet of paper. You could save this and use that at that scale if you wanted, of course. But we will really want to use it at 1 to 100. So we're going to zoom out a bit because it's going to get big. Okay, and we're going to make it at 1 to 100. So now it's 1 to 500. We know that we've got to scale it again this time by 500%. Now I'm doing this in two stages like this because if I try to do it in one thousand in one go, it might not work. Okay, so it's it, it's better to do it like this. Oh, here we, here we are. Okay, so now this is a one to 100 scale on an A2 sheet of paper. And you can see that we see very little of the site on an A2 sheet of paper at this scale. Let me just confirm that this is actually what we've done, and we have actually made it 1 to 100 by measuring this geometry again, this line here. Going to the measuring tool, clicking on one end of it, oops, clicking on one end of it, and dragging. And you can see it's more or less 104, it's 103, or 1030. It's now just, un just over a meter in the actual drawing itself. And if we multiplied that by 100, we would get the proper scale. We'd get 104, more or less, meters for the width of the building. So that means that we're definitely 1 to 100 here now, which is great. Okay, But we've got a very small amount showing up on our paper. So maybe we need to make the paper bigger. So let's change our artboard again, window artboards. And instead of A2, double click, we'll change it to A0. Okay. Okay, so now we have to enter the values for A0, the dimensions, which are 1188 by 840 millimeters. Okay. And here we are. Now we've got A0. We've got still, it's a, it's a very big piece of paper, but it's still not showing a lot of the side. So we well, let's let's frame the site. So we select everything and just move, drag it, move it a little bit better on the side. If, if this is our site here, we want to get a bit more of the granary square, perhaps. Or maybe we'll move this a wee bit. Focus there. Okay. So here we have it. We're going to settle for this framing, a zero, and a one to one hundred. Okay. So we could save this and off we go. Now you saw earlier that there. Were, the great advantage of working with the DWG file is that you have access to the layers that Ordnance Survey have organized the data into.
the categories. So if you go look at the layers palette on the right hand side of the screen here, uh, you can see these layers. There's 26 of them. And all of these categorized uh, are categories of uh, uh, geographic feature or label of geographic feature. Uh, Ordnance, Ordnance Survey have organized their material into. You can turn off everything that's got text in it, which is probably a good idea, get rid of all the labels and everything. Um, and you can see what a feature is if you select it and see what it's been categorized as. So if I move to this path here, select that, you can see that it comes up in this layer here. It's inland water line, which shouldn't be a surprise to us because that is the edge of the canal. Um, what happens if we click on one of the steps, granary square steps, is just a general feature line. Okay, what happens if I go over here to the fish and coal building and select a bit of that? It's a building line, art line, and so on. So everything is organized in there. So you can hide these layers by just clicking the little eye symbol. You can lock them so you can stop yourself accidentally moving them around when you don't want to. And you can um, delete some specifically if you want to as well by locking the ones you don't want to get at and just unlocking one layer and selecting geometry and deleting that. Okay, so, so this is a 1 to 100 and A0 file. So where do you go from here? What do you do now? Well, um, what I'm going to do, suggest is that you, the big issue probably initially is to work out what the lines mean, what they actually represent. Because although you can read the titles uh, in the plans as to what they've been categorized as, um, it's still difficult to relate that to the features that we're familiar with having looked at the sites and knowing them so well. So what I've done is I've grabbed a satellite, Google or uh, Apple satellite view photograph of the site with our, with our labels on, turn the labels off, and I'm going to import that and put it in the background here. And we're going to use that as a way of just helping ourselves to understand what features are what and what these lines represent in reality. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer for that image. Uh, here it is. It's very near the bottom, layer 27. I'm going to drag it until it is actually underneath everything else. I'm going to lock all these other layers by just going like that, right up there and locking them all. And now I'm going to import an image and put it in behind the geometry in this, uh, in this uh, file. And uh, we do that using the same command as you do in InDesign, which is file place. So here's the image I've got already. It's a, it's a grab from uh, what browser window of Google Maps showing the satellite view of this area. I'm just going to place that in there. <clears throat> Initially, you can see it just gives you, uh, like it does in InDesign, uh, a small iconic representation of the image you're about to place and asks you to, if you click once, it'll just come in at one-to-one -one size. So we just click, that's what it'll do. It's quite small, and then we'll have to scale it up. And obviously you need to remember to hold down shift when you scale to keep the proportions correct. And there it is, as you can see. Now, obviously we cannot see the line. It's underneath everything, but we can't see the line. So uh, on top of it, and so we can't really work out where we're putting it, how, uh, how big it is in re relation to the geometry already in the file. So what we're gonna do is change the transparency of this image. Going to the window, showing, finding the transparency palette which is there and just make this transparent a bit more okay so we're going to take it right the way down to about 15 percent there it is okay so it's really background in our okay and we can see how it looks in relation to what we've got underneath it's not bad in terms of size it's perhaps let me just zoom in here a little have a look Maybe it's a little bit big, so let's scale it down a wee bit. Okay, well that's not too bad. Okay, it doesn't match exactly, and never ever will, because the uh, the Digimap. Ordnance survey data is precise um, and measured from people actually measuring things on the ground. And unfortunately, the Google 
or Apple view our satellite images or aerial photographs of sites that have been stitched together, uh, very cleverly stitched together, but not uh, very, very precise in terms of size and scale. Okay, but if you put these two things together, you now begin to have an understanding of what these lines in your, in your geometry represent. You can see that this pale blue line down here, for example, is the edge of the canal. The dotted line represents some of these other features. So it represents this grass verge here. But there's another thickness and thinness in here. Okay, so that gives you a sense of what you're looking at and what these things represent. And you can begin to work from this to create your own site plan. At least you've got a site here at the scale you might be making your own drawings at. You could use it as a background. And um, we'll look at drawing plans in Illustrator in another video. Thank you very much. That's all for now.